Hey everybody, we are live. It is Tuesday morning and I have a fantastic guest with me today. I have Laura with me all the way from Charleston today and she is a culture expert as well as uh, communication and I think we met on LinkedIn. Was that how we ended up connecting I, I think originally we did. i think it, we did you were on my <laughs> podcast maybe last year the year before right. i actually think that we have a mutual friend who said you should look each other up oh uh, maybe that was how it started right yes, yeah but we've been uh, following each other ever since and i just love the way our areas of expertise dovetail together because i believe that your culture is reflected and shaped by your communication i mean my expertise is really communication but after doing it for so many years, you see the culture is shaped and uh, reflected in the way people talk to each other, right? Uh, Laura, your your company is Mixonian Institute. I want to yep. get that out there so everybody. There? Oh yeah, there's that. Right. <laughs> you can see that she uh, she has a great uh, podcast that you can find uh to listen to which we'll make sure that everybody knows where to get your cultured communication workbook uh before we're done today because you should know laura and use her as a resource for sure um i thought perhaps we would start with just the definition of culture because i think a lot of people have different oh. definitions so what yes. is your definition for you of of company culture like what is it well, you're, I love that question because uh, that's one of the things in, in PhD school, as I call it, you know, like people argue and discuss definitions for days at a time. And of course, I, since I, I was uh, 40 years old when I started my PhD, so, and with three kids. And so I had a very jauntist eye to this extensive uh, deep dive into so many definitions, although it has its value. So I went with the shortest definition <laughs> with, with everything. It's like, what's your favorite definition? Oh, the shortest one. And the, <laughs> and the shortest definition of culture is what is normal. Like what is it, like in a household, um, you know, in some people's homes, it's cult, it's perfectly fine to yell, you know, from the kitchen downstairs to a bedroom upstairs to say, you know, come on down or I have a question. And, and in my house, I mean, I that drives me crazy. It's like, if you want to talk to me, you come find me. And, and that's just a, a, a very small example. And that's within the same country, same language, you know, a very small cultural difference. So what is normal? But I have a definition of healthy culture which I think is extremely useful as a starting place to get things going in, in your company. And, and a healthy culture is one where everyone feels heard, understood, and valued. And that doesn't mean you have to agree. It's not about, you know, being a syncophant and just agreeing and being yes people to the boss, but it's being heard, being valued, and hopefully understood also. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're here to talk partially about body language because that's my thing. So uh, really curious as to how you see people's behavior impacting uh, culture or maybe it might be partial creation, right? Because culture is, right. often, is often a communication thing. How does the body language piece affect in your view or how have you seen it or stories that you have? <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. Well, I, I, I'm going to tie my answer to that very good question to the language piece. And um, when my first second language, my second language is Spanish. And I uh, first really got a grip on that as a, an exchange student with UNC Chapel Hill in Seville, Spain, many years ago. And um, as long as you had body language working, uh, you know, with imperfect language skills, that managed to like see get over the gap where, where you lacked words, you know, like, or even when I lived in Germany, I went to the grocery stores like the first day in Germany and I had studied, but I wasn't fluent and I couldn't remember the word for chicken. And, and in the German grocery stores, you can't, they didn't have, at least in this grocery store, like the packaged meats like that we have, you had to ask the butcher for it. And I couldn't <laughs> remember how to say chicken. So I said, I'm kilo, what, 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 what? 
And uh, I got my ticket and you know what? They didn't even laugh. So, um, so, I, so I am very comfortable with body language. But back to Spain in that situation, I remember early on having a phone conversation with someone and because I was missing the body language and I literally came out of that conversation with a bl just a, a bludgeoning headache because I just had tried so hard to focus just I only had the words and voice tone I didn't have their body language and my body language to help right and then so let's fast forward to today and we're all working remote or largely working remote and I think that working remote like this one-on-one -on -one is not so bad uh, but I think that the screen and the technology actually filters our body like this because you're we're seeing each other on a very small rectangle. And if there were eight of us in this meeting, there we would just see these rectangles, very small. And our brains have to work like overtime to try to get the signals that we would normally get from just even peripheral vision, right? So I think. And what I teach, I'm sure you do too. I would love to hear your tips. You know, you have to like speak louder and use gestures. Stand up if you can, because your your body language has a long way to go and it's being <laughs> filtered out in the process. What do you think? Uh, right. I mean, I tell people to kind of figure you're speaking to at least double the people that are on the call. Um if it so if it is a group of like eight you know expand it like you're in a large conference room and you're getting to the back of the room uh as well you know you're standing at the front waiting with your slides and you're really want to make sure that because the ceo came in late he's in the back of the room you want to make sure you get there right uh so for sure that when it comes to like the little tiny boxes absolutely it it um messes with our brain so I tell people to turn on your cameras because if you're the only one sort of that is, you're getting screen time with the boss, right? Because mm -hmm. the manager mm -hmm. feels really obligated because they're the one leading the meeting. Right. So have their camera on. And if you want to be promoted, well, guess what? Get your camera on because when it comes time, you will be remembered or at least you will be the one exactly. that was touted for dealing better with this situation mm -hmm. than your colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a real, I think it can help us in some ways, uh, having the, the screen, but, but you're right. It, it messes with our brains that we're looking at this many people at a time. And normally in a conference room, you don't look at everybody simultaneously. Right. right? And, and, and that kind of, so our brain has had to go, do I look right. at everybody? Do I just look at the speaker? Or what do I do when I'm in this kind of a situation? So I think the hardest thing is yet to come, however, because I'll be curious to ask you about hybrid. Oh, and what you think about right, the half worst. the people on the screen and half the people in person and what mm -hmm. that might, I guess, again, kind of the, the double-edged sword about we have expanded our businesses and we've hired people from all around the world now during this year. But that means we're not all together in the office anymore. And how does how is kind of the half the people working from home and half the people being in the office all the time? What ramifications do you foresee or oh. are you developing programs to deal with that? For sure. Well, <laughs> well let, let's let's uh, step back in history for a moment before COVID. Uh, back in the day when, uh, especially. Uh, maybe in the 90s and the early 2000s, like a company would have a headquarters and they would have offices, like say the headquarters were in Dallas and they would have offices in New Jersey and Los Angeles and maybe all over the country, maybe all, all over the world, but there was that, you know, the headquarters. And there was this issue at the time for years and years and years, always the people who, the further you were away from the seat of power of your organization, the more you had this feeling of like, Nobody tells me anything. I'm the last to know. But it, me being the outside, like we're outside and we're like little bees that fly all over and talk to everybody. We find out, well, guess what? Everybody feels that way. Even the guy or the lady that's, you know, got the office right next to the CEO. She's like, nobody tells me anything. So, so you have that going from pre 
remote work and it is def it's more complex and it's more of a workload. I mean, we have to face, I mean, people, I'm sure you have realized uh, in, in a lot of company, people are working so hard. I mean, because they're, maybe they have a client in India and maybe they have a supplier in Ireland. I mean, and they, so they've got the different time zones. So they've got these incredible workload. And then on top of that, it's like you can't just like, hey, quick question. Nope, that's all gone. So yeah, and everybody be remote is a level playing field in that sort of uh, at that uh, level of thought uh, that we're all remote. We're all dealing with all the things that people deal with when they're working in their garage or laundry room or spare bedroom. And it is definitely going to be something, um, I mean, and, and I do I do not have, you know, like, oh, here's the answer. But uh, I, I do know that it's going to be even more challenging to accommodate the differences. And there have to be rules of engagement. There have to be times when everyone is accessible. That I know for sure. Right. Yeah. That's the one thing that I've been seeing and it kind of got dropped is this idea the, the rules of engagement, the protocols, the expectations. We were talking about cameras be being on. That goes back to that communication and the, and the mm -hmm. fact that people feel like nobody knows. Right. right? <laughs> and it, and <laughs> well, it goes, you know, I'm the last to know. Well, right. get ahead of it and so that people don't have that uh, that feeling. So it's, it's kind of interesting on the whole um, even re-entry kind of thing do you feel like when the uh, when everybody was as you say working from home and it was that kind of leveled the playing field because everybody was like that do you feel like re-entry now like cultures have shifted company cultures have shifted during this time and now re-entry oh, sure. is weird uh, for sure for sure because Okay, we, we both know that stress is what makes communication extremely difficult, right? So that's why you have body language to help you uh, compensate for that and tricks to help you channel that stress into excitement. And then what would be more stressful than a pandemic that actually kills people and it is highly contagious and nobody really seems to have a grip on it? <laughs> uh, like why what it's about i mean we know a lot but it's not like you know we know as much as we do about the german measles or something so and, and then some people are like whatever if it kills me if it kills me we all have to die of something and then some people are you know have an elderly relative at home and they're very afraid and then now we have the vaccine and but some people don't want to take the vaccine so that is a whole hot mess that is layered on top of all of us, which is an extra layer of stress, no matter what your position is, because you have your position and everybody in your office ha may have a different position. And, and that's a life or death situation. It's not like, oh, should we have blue buttons or green buttons? It's a, an illness. And hopefully with the vaccination, we will get, you know, our herd immunity. But that has, it's like, I think we're all still those scarred about how we just from one day to the next, you know, lost a lot of our uh, uh, freedoms to get out and about and to run our businesses. My business, uh, for example, completely pivoted from in-person workshops to uh, online coaching. Thank God, I'm very grateful. I mean, it's, it's alive and well, and I'm super busy, but not everybody was able to make that pivot successfully. So there's a lot of stress and stress is bad for communication. Bad communication is bad for culture. So it, it's uh, it's something that has to be consciously rebuilt. And, and that takes some thought. But I think setting the rules of engagement at, at, at every level for the meetings that you have, the one-on-ones that you have. And I'm talking about somebody who's um, not the CEO of the company. Like, you know, you're the managing director in the middle there. Uh, but you can do your part to 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 make it clear that you welcome their voices, you want them to speak up, you want to hear from people, and you want them to get to the point also, not go on and on. Yeah. What would you say, you know, if there is a manager then that's like, okay, uh, I I want to up my, my communication and I also want to 
uh, be cognizant of how I'm showing up in my executive presence and body language and that kind of thing. Like what, what would be, you know, like the good body language signals versus ones that maybe have more of a detrimental reaction to, to the culture? Like what should a manager be trying to kind of add to their body language repertoire to encourage a, um, you know, good for lack of a better word, culture, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, a right. positive right. culture. <laughs> well, one, one thing that I think is, is this, well, first of all, you know, good posture and, and realizing that, you know, stress is a big theme for me. We tend to accumulate it right here. And so, you know, like we, you and I were both stretching uh, right before we, we went online, but also I think smiling, um, you know, the sometimes in the body language world, in the executive presence world, there's this line of thought that, well, you know, if you smile too much, you're not very powerful. And then, you know, and you've heard of the resting witch face, and I personally have resting serial killer face. And so that it would not be very, you know, I could be just listening to somebody and look like I'm, you know, plotting their demise when I'm actually just listening. So I have trained myself to up, turn Keep the it up. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. So that yeah. people feel relaxed. And, and also I have to establish rapport with uh, somebody that I have never met before instantly so that they're, they feel the trust in order to spill the guts and so we can work on uh, how to improve it. So I would say smi- stretching and smiling would be the two body language. And as far as language, just to get this in for executive presence, because it's such a high leverage tool is a structure of what you're going to say, you know, that helps introverts and extroverts like, Say what you're going to say, why it's important, and then say it. Mm-hmm. Don't just always go off the cuff. As much right. As everybody does, right? Right. Because <laughs> I can wing it well when you wing it. <laughs> and see, people are winging it and they're not getting the body language signals that of people going, you know, after they drone on and on for five, ten mm-hmm. minutes on the topic. So they're missing that because they're so small. And so I, I think structuring what you're going to say is just hugely helpful. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, and having that high energy body language and welcoming a demeanor. Right. Find a buddy, you know, yes. practice before yes. so that you feel like they can check and say, okay, how's your lighting? How's my microphone? Right. Uh, do the slides make sense to you? Or is it, do they only make sense to me? You know, those sorts of things. And then you so feel more helpful. confident because you've practiced it once. I think people are afraid to show that that vulnerability or that they need to practice with other people. And oh, I think, yeah. You know, I mean, it's sort of, put, you know, I don't want to put myself out of a job. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I'm going to practice with me too. But there's also the idea that you can just use somebody else in the office just that rehearsal, yes. <laughs> the practice. Yes. I guess coming from theater, I'm all about rehearsing, uh, and so that is a that's and a that good helps thing. you relax because you not only has somebody heard it before, but those words have come out of your mouth. Um, I even think in the in the absence of a buddy, if you record yourself, but. I mean, I would rather pay somebody to listen to me than have to watch my own video. But, um, <laughs> but very but true. Me, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah. or, or they keep telling me they're like, I don't like to watch myself all day long, and I'm like, fine, <laughs> take off self view, you know, right, check right. when you first turn it on, and then turn it off if you can. Right, if you don't right. Like it. it is just it can be distracting. Um, yeah. Uh, well, Teresa uh, was here with us. I wanted to just post her comment. Yeah. She's leaving us for a minute. Oh, but uh, So, Teresa, thank you very much. She is uh, on, uh, works with me at uh, TEDx Wrigleyville. She's one of the, the curators. And she's a fantastic attorney. So, so uh, I guess, since we're almost out of time here, what would be, um, so we talked about posture, we talked about, mm-hmm. This, and it's really interesting that you're talking about this kind of area of the body, particularly as, as holding a lot of our stress, mm-hmm. because this is the part of the body that I'm always talking to everybody about. And we're doing being, this all day. It's, it's, mm-hmm. the, it's the, where our collaboration signals come from. It's where mm-hmm. our, um, our like, know, and trust signals come through. Oh, and it's, what, and it's what we can see on Zoom, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we really do have to stretch this out or relax mm-hmm. it. We have to have mm-hmm. access to this part of the body. That's because mm-hmm. somebody else support me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like yeah. nobody's ever talking about this. They always talk about gestures or they talk about mm -hmm. facial expressions. And I'm like, well, what about yeah, this part yeah. of the body? A lot of people don't use for many, many reasons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's the, you know, the women who felt like they matured too early or whatever, mm -hmm. so they don't move anything or they feel really protected oh, right. and, and, and shy about right uh, you know their their upper body there's you know men that were taught that they don't cry and they shouldn't have their emotions and they, they shouldn't be connected to any of that so they stiffen this up as well mm -hmm. and then there's folks if you have anybody that's ex-military in your oh, office yeah. right, that came from that so it's i feel like i i was like gosh it's for this section of the body i'd be like hey we need to have some kind of sternum practice mm. <laughs> like uh, love. To activate your uh sternum because yeah. it doesn't connect to your posture and all of that so mm -hmm. uh so for all of you that want to increase the positive culture in your companies just wiggle a little more during <laughs> during the day Truly. before you go into your meetings Truly. Uh, just if you anything you can do to lower the stress and anxiety of, of yourself that's going to ripple out if you can do it, if you're the leader and you can intentionally do that for your team and you know your team you know we know that the leaders know their people better than anybody they know who gets nervous who has anxiety uh who is shy who talks too much i mean that so you know put on your communication coach hat you the uh, leader the, the managing director the vice president put that hat on and help your team and that's just such a i mean you you don't need a phd you don't need a theater degree you don't need to have been on broadway just you know open this up and i think that and that and some you know smiling more than, i always say smile more than you think is necessary <laughs> because um to just to keep that welcoming look on your face that you may feel all the time, but that doesn't mean, just because you feel it doesn't mean that other people perceive it that way. Absolutely, it's all in the eye of the beholder, people. Uh, <laughs> you could be doing all sorts of great things if they don't perceive them that right. way. It, you know, you then have to figure out what else you can do sort of thing as the, um, as the manager. What's plan B if they're not getting uh, if they're not getting it uh, right, right, right in the right in the moment. So, absolutely, I think all of those those tips are great. Uh, right away, a lot of people don't take the um, the kind of the, the pH or the or the litmus test of the room when they walk in. You know, what's the energy feel like? Right, right. Did you right. walk into and everybody got silent because okay, they were obviously talking about something that they don't. <laughs> Or, you know, what, what's, does it feel very stressful when you go in? You can, mm -hmm. you can feel that, but you need to be aware that you're looking right. for it when you come in. So are right. you, are you walking into a good feeling, a happy meeting? Are you walking into highly stressful? Okay. So this feel, you know, and acknowledge it, label it, don't mm -hmm. ignore it. That's the right. other thing that, that happens is leadership doesn't, Kind of bring up the elephant in the room in a sense like wow okay it feels right and a little like, a little off today what's what's, who, going, who's what's, gonna tell me what's going on <laughs> right well and that's such a lost opportunity to build trust because let's say that i walk into a room and people seem really like uptight and i say um gosh, you guys seem to be really angry. Is is everybody, oh, is there something I should know about it? And they say, oh no, Laura, we're not angry. We're uh, we're just worried because we heard this rumor that uh, the, since the sales were down, that our jobs were at risk. And so that, you know, you have that opportunity to check in and you may have read wrong, you know, like you mentioned earlier today that a lot of times people assume that, the, you know, that they, the listener have done something horrible. They just forgot about it. And, and in fact, it could be, you know, I had to take my pet to the hospital or my husband isn't feeling well. And, you know, there's all kinds of things. But taking that, doing that emotional check in is a great opportunity to see what they really are feeling. Maybe they were just asleep at the wheel. And uh, but getting that out, getting that out in the open is such a great opportunity, I think. Yeah. And, and setting it up is part of those uh expectations in a sense right. right you know we have we have the expectation that we are open and honest and if something's going on you can tell me kind of thing you right. know and then meet right. it right that's exactly. the other thing of course yeah. <laughs> you gotta meet yeah. it if you say it don't yep. don't say it and then 
you know, yes. they start to tell you something and okay, let's go to the agenda. <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> Why did you ask if you're just gonna rim right right over? Oh me? yeah. So there's lots of those things which you know, which we laugh about and we and it sounds and everybody listening to this or watching the replay will be saying, Well, no kidding, right? And then <laughs> but take a minute and think back to the last five meetings that you had. Did that happen? Mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you know, particularly, I think, online version, we start, you know, we turn the cameras on and we get rolling. There isn't that kind of everybody coming in chit chat moment. Exactly. Kind of thing. And that there isn't the review as you leave either. Uh, <laughs> so the, the culture communication workbook, is that something that they find and can download or is that, is yeah, that on well, Amazon? Uh, this is what it yes. looks like. Isn't that pretty? I had Ooh. a lovely um, designer work with me on this. And you know, you talked about the coming into the room, uh, the uh, get that alignment. I use the uh, comparison of a stoplight, you know, the uh. red, yellow, green. If anybody wants it, just send me on LinkedIn your snail mail address and I will mail it to you because I order, I have quite a few of these. Um, I ordered them for my 2020 in-person workshops. They were delivered on March 16th, 2020. And uh, all every single one of my in-person workshops. And <laughs> so even though it, we transmogrified into coaching and webinars, I still have a lot of these. I'm oh, happy to share. Great. So I take advantage, folks. Like, yeah, take you know, advantage. get one in the mail. That's awesome. Yeah, just send me your snail mail. That's and I will be happy. And you know, it's it's meant to accompany you know workshop with me talking. But if there's enough there. There's some exercises you can use for your team. You're going to gain a little bit of understanding of the communication process, why it's so dang difficult. And uh, there's some great exercises about around difficult conversations and around listening and around getting clear on your purpose and it's ties you know the communication and the culture pieces together so i highly recommend oh. it and and subscribe to the speak up podcast Podcasts, yes as exactly. well so find that because she has great guests on and, and talks about communication i thank you so much laura for being yeah, here uh so good to see you. reach out get on her newsletter listen to the podcast come on send down her your come email. on over. i mean send her your real address to get the the yes to get, that's fantastic mm -hmm. culture communication workbook that's awesome that's what a great gift um yes. prizes even on my show uh, yes. <laughs> which is fantastic love that yes. uh so i will let you go to the rest of your your day and we will uh sign on everybody make sure that you check the replay if you didn't get to see the whole thing